3 also coming in assisting you, pulling a line off assisting you. Be advised, we have a complete entry to the building. We're in front of the personal collapse. We just have a personal collapse to the ceiling. We're going to get it. We hear the term near miss kicked around a lot, but how do you actually define what a near miss is? The thing is, we don't get to pick when a bad situation is going to happen. This could be your first do here, this could be your fire, and this could be you. We hope that you find this video helpful and that you think about situational awareness and communications on the fire ground. Engine 132, Fire Channel 6, Unknown Fire, 10701 North 99th Avenue. Engine 132, Fire Channel 6. All right, as we left the station, we could tell that we obviously had a working fire. We had a, a large volume of smoke in the area. As we came down 99th Avenue here, the smoke was all the way across. 99th Avenue and you could not make out this parking lot. This building was not recognizable uh, and without us having an exact address to what was on fire, we, I directed my engineer to go down towards Arrowhead Mall so we could check the back of it to ensure that it was not on fire and there wasn't a dumpster. Uh, as we came around, we isolated it all the way back down to this area and then the smoke was becoming more pressurized in this parking lot so we could tell that it was not uh, in Apollo Village. So we came in to right here, and that's when I, we could definitely make out that uh, it was the strip mall on fire. from the hospital on a medical call and we heard engine 132 got dispatched on a check smoke in the area. Uh, I pulled the history up and all it showed was basically check smoke across from Apollo, I think it was Apollo Mobile Home Park. Nine times out of ten check smoke in the area is nothing. My instinct though is just you know hey maybe let's go check and see if they need some help. Let's say maybe add on to this go see if it's something. something better than Engine 194, south. Command 194. 194, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I want you guys to go ahead and come on in. Take the second line off of our truck and, and assist us with uh, serious attack, search and rescue. As we went into uh, 105, we encountered ex extreme heat and zero visibility. Uh, smoke was to the floor, it pushed us down, uh, we immediately could see a heavy volume of fire in the back of the building and slightly coming up. Uh, my firefighter went ahead and opened up the nozzle and we started knocking the fire down and not really making any head wave. We went in approximately 15 feet and then at that point uh, the conditions started to change. Um, as we pulled the line, looking at the structure, you know, the first thoughts on the structure is old strip mall, parapet wall, and it looked like you had about three to four suites that were starting to push smoke from out under the eaves. Um, we broke a window at that point and opened up the door. And upon breaking that window, you had thick black smoke that started to roll out of that door. Thick black smoke. Um, we decided to go in and make entry. As we started going in within two feet of the door, um, my tick became inoperable. Operable. And what I mean by that is if, if you haven't been on a fire like that before with that thick black smoke, um, when you make entry into a building with that thick smoke, um, the soot and the carbon, it coats, your, it coats your, basically your mask and it also coats your camera. So if you can't see your hand in front of your face, you're not going to be able to see your tick and you're not going to be able to see the screen. And that's how thick the smoke was coming out of there. I gave a wipe to the tick screen, I wiped my mask, and within seconds it's gone again. It's just pitch black. Yeah, Engine 191, go. 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 Engine 
a supply line and pulling a hand line off our truck. Battalion 191 is on the team. Battalion 191 to command. Go ahead. Engine 132, are you command? Affirmative, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and take command on Make You Interior, and you have 191 also with you. Engine 194, yes. I arrived on the scene. Uh, I took command. Uh, asked for a report from 132. They said they had a lot of smoke inside, but they couldn't see any fire. So I assumed command and made them interior. Uh, as units began to get on the scene, my initial thought was, I, I need sev several factors. One, I need to get more water on this fire. I need to get this thing sectorized, and I need to get somebody on the roof. Uh, LT. Copy. Give me a better report once you get in. We spotted our apparatus on the west side of the building right next to Battalion 191 and when I stepped off the truck, I, I saw a gas can, an empty gas can. It didn't really do anything for me at that time. It was one gas can, didn't pay much attention to it. As I came around the back of the LT and was finishing putting on my gear to go talk to, the, to Battalion 191 about what we are going to do since we brought the LT, when I noticed another gas can there. And right about that time, Battalion 131 was pulling up onto the scene. They were getting off the truck, and I yelled over to them, hey, there's gas cans all over the place. Catastrophes oftentimes have a chain of events that lead up to them, and the links of that chain oftentimes have red flags attached to them. These crews were seeing red flags. Communications is really the key here. Our crews tend to be really good at spatial awareness and focusing on the task at hand in our immediate area of operation. Where we tend to lack is communicating that to the other crews. Why that's important is that other crews on the interior, on the roof and command need to know what kind of conditions you're operating in, especially when it changes, so that they can take that information along with what they know where they're at and put that together like a puzzle so that they've got the big picture of what's going on in this fire. Command engine 133. Engine 133, go ahead. I want you to come into the scene. I want you to pump engine 132's line. Come in, take your crew, take a second hand life off one engine 132. Copy, come into the scene, pump engine 132's line, take a hand line off the truck and sit in with 132. Ladder 131, approaching from north. Handle ladder 131. Ladder 131, go ahead. I want you to come in the scene and assist ladder 191 uh, and assist them. They're roof sector at this time. Commander roof ladder 191, you have ladder 131 coming in to assist you. Ladder copy. I got my uh, truck heading to the rear to open up that back door. We're going to the roof of the ground ladder off into 191. Copy. You have ladder 131 coming to assist you. I copy. It took me and my two firefighters were going to the roof. The engineer went to the back of the building and started opening that thing up in case the interior crews needed a second way out. They could do that. And he did. He went to the back of the building and did a fantastic job. Started cutting open doors. Head interior 131. Head interior to command engine 132, go ahead. Be advised, I have, is that? Be advised, I have 193 also coming in assisting, pulling a line off assisting you. Be advised, we have a special complete entry to the building. We're in center, we have special collapse. Or we just have a partial collapse to the ceiling. We're going to the Interior command copy. You said you have 
possible collapse. That's our bread and butter. That's what we want to do. It comes so few and far in between that we want to get in there and just kick butt and fight fire. We don't want anybody to tell us that we need to get out and we want to do our job. As a captain though, um, especially like with this fire, I think you need to pay extra careful attention to some of the signs and the things that are going on. I think on fire sometimes we get in the process of we think, well, the battalion chief or the BC or command, um, they're going to tell us when to get out. They know what's going on. They can see it from the outside. They know everything that's going on. But the truth of the matter is, is that we're the ones that are inside. We're seeing the conditions. We know what we're feeling and what's going on. And if it's not adequately displayed, um, then we need to let it be known and we need to voice those things. I'm going to go ahead and do emergency traffic. I want to pull all units out of here. Command to alarm. Do the emergency traffic. We're going to have units with defensive. We have possible uh, collapse in the interior. All units on the fire ground. We have a possible partial roof collapse. We need to exit the building. All units on the fire ground. Possible partial roof collapse. We need to exit the building at 2312. Command to interior. Copy that. I need all units out of the ground, out of the interior. Uh, advising you're out with far. Copy. You have a car 194. We have fire engine 194. Command engine 191. You have a car. Engine 191 has a car. Uh, lessons learned. I think the big one for me would be to ask for more CAN reports on, on calls like this. Uh, the more CAN reports you get, it probably would have pulled them out even sooner um, than, than I did, uh, waiting for something to come down on their head. That was, that was a big lesson learned for me. On About 10 minutes into this, um, I personally felt we weren't making any progress. I couldn't see anybody. I, it was dark, heavy. It was getting a little bit hotter. And uh, once I heard that radio traffic and I heard uh, Chris talking to Sinji, saying, hey, they're going to pull us out of here. I was like, please, I hope they do. And, and Chris went ahead. And Culturally, we always wait for the battalion chief and the command vehicle outside to make the decision to go defensive. You're the biggest stakeholder when you're an interior crew. You've got the most amount of information, and you recognize that the situation's changing. Everybody that we talked to on this fire knew that the situation was going bad, but it never got communicated to the other crews or to command. Get that information out. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Roof director in command. Tony, go ahead. Hey, well, we found this question over on this far south corner. I got charred smoke on the corner. We're not going to go on that side. You got smoke on this on the fire off. It's still on the west south. Happy to get off the roof. Happy to drive you down with the car. One of the lessons I, I learned on this that just reinforces is don't let your emotions drive your actions. You know, we train a lot. We, our bread and butter is single story houses here in South Peoria, cutting holes on these roofs. We do it all the time, we're really good at it. But we train a lot on these commercial buildings. We've spent hours and hours and hours of training on how to make these commercial cuts, specifically on panelized roofs. And we were up on that roof, it was a panelized roof, it was a working fire, and all this training we had done, we'd had our, that was our shot right there to make that cut. We were ready for it, we knew how to do it, and I probably could have got it done, but I, I took it. I thought about it for a second. The conditions didn't dictate. I didn't like the way it looked, and I, I just thought about the smoke, all the training that we had done, and I didn't let my emotions override my actions, and I happened to make the right call. We, we came off of the roof instead of staying up there and making that cut, going for it, hanging it out there when it, was, it wasn't worth the risk. There was nobody in the building. Fire conditions didn't dictate it. So this fire had a good ending. Everybody got out safe, there were no injuries, and the fire went out. The take home message here though is, pay attention to the red flags, listen to your gut, and remember that everybody's got a radio for a reason. If you see something, say something. It could save a life. For Peoria Fire Department, I'm Deputy Chief Rick Picard. Have a safe shift.